The most successful Formula One driver in history will be spending a fourth night here at Grenoble Hospital. He remains in a medically induced coma so that doctors can closely monitor his condition. Lots of the uh, injured taken to St Thomas's Hospital. Our reporter Maddie Savage uh, is there for us. Maddie, what's the latest there? Well, details on the casualty figures have been changing throughout the day. The very latest that we have from the London Ambulance Service and the Metropolitan Police is that a total of five people were taken to hospital. Just 12 months ago, people were celebrating in these very streets, partying into the night because France had its first socialist president in 17 years. Now, these crowds are here for very different reasons. Even before the leaders resumed their talks, the outlook was bleak. Britain came to Brussels looking for a cut or a freeze in the budget. David Cameron didn't achieve that. So what happens next? Well, in the short term, instead of the long talks predicted to last all weekend by some, the politicians have gone home. Along with most of the journalists, this press centre is normally packed. But they'll all be back in the new year to see if a deal can be done. <laughs> this afternoon's snack is definitely a hit. But this is the last meal India and Leon will eat at home for 24 hours. When their mother Maria works night shifts at a care home, the children sleep at a nursery run by their local council. So you've just dropped the children off. How does it feel at this moment? Well, I miss them, of course, and it's a mother's heart aching, but I know they are happy there. They are very happy there. Now, is uh, providing somewhere safe for addicts to take drugs the best way to save lives? We've been out on patrol with police and it's clear that despite all the efforts to clear up the neighbourhood, there is still work to be done. And officers admit it's been a real change, directing people to places where they can take drugs safely rather than arresting them. But Danish police believe the idea could also work in the UK, perhaps not to solve the country's drug problem, but as a key part of the solution. Maddie Savage, BBC News in Copenhagen. Well, we can join our correspondent in Paris, Maddie Savage. Maddie, um, what have you heard about how and where the body was found? Well, Pierre's father has spoken to us. He said that he had a number of phone calls. Comments that are coming in. Let's cross to uh, Bush House and the World Have Your Say team and hear what we've got. In a very busy few minutes. The phone lines have been rammed with people getting in touch with us. Some of the latest places, Kenya, Mauritius, Italy. Well, there's been a resounding uh, yes vote from President Francois Hollande. He himself only elected in May, so he's only been working with we President Barack. We move on controversy in Belgium over the choice of a Christmas tree selected for Brussels. Here's Maddie Savage. Brussels is preparing for its winter festivities. But this year's Christmas tree is about as far from traditional as you can get. The whole thing's about 25 metres high, around 100 steps, so going up keeps you warm on a cold winter's day like this. And once you get to the top, this is the view. <coughs> One family who are with me now to tell us their story is uh, the Laverick family. Peter Laverick at the head, your boat Verity just behind us. First of all, tell us how the day was for you. Oh, it's stunning. It's a once in a lifetime experience. And it's never going to happen Wooden again. Boat. And what could you see from where you were? Thousands of people have turned out on the streets here to try and catch a glimpse of the new royal couple. And now that moment has finally arrived. This was one of three kisses enjoyed by the crowds as the royals shone in some rare autumn sunshine. From Paris, Maddie Savage reports. The soundtrack to the send-off came from the French military, but this was an event dedicated to British troops. Many of the cyclists are former soldiers who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, including triple Paralympic silver medalist John Allen Butterworth. 
and waving them on their way was the Duchess of Cornwall as part of her first solo appearance at a public event abroad just a week after the death of a British soldier on home soil. The organisers say they want the focus to be on the fundraising and the physical challenge by these cyclists as they begin their 350-mile journey. Maddie Savage, BBC News in Paris.